Hi, I'm Stuart and welcome to Sirenet Television. In our spotlight, scene light area at Sirenet, we have a variety of great Sirenet product made for us here in the US. And this one is no exception. It is the SN SL4 and Chris is going to take it apart. Thank you, Stuart. The six inch LED light head that I have here happens to be our SN SL4. It's part of a family. It has the one and the three series. There's also a different version that's a handheld that's our two series. But in this case here, the four series is what we're gonna be highlighting. It's a six inch unit, like I mentioned, so the diameter across. It's designed for a Unity Spotlight upgrade. So you can take your Unity, remove the halogen incandescent light head that's in it, and install this in its place. Very simplistic to do and a great upgrade. Lowers the current draw on the vehicle, gives you a tremendous upgrade to your light output, not to mention you're never gonna have to worry about a bulb wiggling loose or burning out on you when you're out on the scene. What's unique about the 4 Series is the spread of light that it offers you. Unlike the 1, the 2, and the 3, which are more focused tight beams, the 4 Series here is a wide, broad beam. It's actually a 60 by 40 spread, so it's really designed as a floodlight versus a spotlight in the 1, the 2, and the 3. So with that, if you're looking to do a floodlight upgrade on your application, maybe a back of your fire apparatus, DOT, plow, or even wanting to change out your off-road lights, maybe you have a set of incandescents that are in a six inch housing. Well, if you can open those housings up, remove the six inch incandescent, you can install one of these in its place, put it back together, and then you have a nice LED upgrade. And with that, you'll have instantaneous on and off light, no UV output, so no pesky bug attraction, not to mention it's a much brighter, crisper white than the yellow in an incandescent so it does better in rain and snow penetration. But enough talk about what this is, fun of it, gonna open this up. And with that, front of it's got a UV resistant polycarbonate lens. So with that, it's gonna stay nice and glossy for years to come. So no hazing, it's not gonna dull out and pretty darn scratch resistant as well. Plus, I mean, if I wanted to, could probably take a hammer to this thing. I don't know, they might get mad at me, but it'll take an impact if needed. So well-designed, well-suited for the DOT fire off-road environment. Back of it's pretty darn straightforward. It's actually just one big cast metal heat sink. So you have a lot of diodes in here and we'll go ahead and get to those, but they produce the heat, goes to the back, heat projects off. So well-engineered, but that's what you get. Four screws hold the unit together. With those removed, you can go ahead. Break the seal around the lip here to separate the lens from the cast housing. Give you a nice inside look here. Front optic lens incorporates a rubber gasket which helps seal it onto the housing here so it keeps condensation, grit and grime from getting inside here. So when it goes back together, well, well sealed. Optics inside here, and this is what gives you your really wide spread of light. I'll show you that here in a moment. Inside, you have another optic array that's over your diode and electronic board assembly. So with that, I'm going to go ahead, change bits, and get this optic out of the way to reveal the diodes themselves.
Now, with the screws loosened, and go ahead, remove the inner optic portion here. What's actually very trick about this here is it's a deep dished optic. Again, it's a one piece, so one mold is what this comes out of. And you can see on the back here, it's got depth to it. So with that kind of being a cone shape, small on the bottom, widens at the top. So what that does is it takes the diode dispersion which is really small and intense on the diode itself, takes that and disperses it so you get a broader spread from your diode. So really, it's a great way to manipulate your light spread from your diode board here. Very intense with a wide layout of diodes, all epoxy sealed, so if you're worried about resistance to weather, the outside environment, just longevity in general, you can see it's very, very well constructed on the inside. So nothing to worry about. Again, cast housing. On the back here is your posts, black for your ground, copper for your lead. Inside here is a Gore-Tex breather. So it allows when the unit's on again, the heat dissipates out. And also it allows it to escape through the Gore-Tex breather. So it's kind of an inlet system. Well, outlet system for airflow. So we'll go ahead, take these components here, reassemble them, and then turn the unit on so you can see the nice broad spread of light that it gives you. Go ahead, make sure I'm getting my screws repositioned. Again, what's nice with this is there's only one way to install it. So get it laid out, screws in place here. Go ahead, cinch it back together. And there you have it. Screws tighten back down, so inner optic back on to the assembly over the diodes, nice and properly placed. You can see it's nice and level. And what I'm gonna do here before I put this back on is I'm gonna put 12 volts to this so you can see how the light output is this way versus once the optic lens goes over the front face. So with the clips connected on the back here, I'll go ahead, flip it over. Well, maybe point it down before I turn it on here. That way I'm not going to blind out yourselves and the camera crew. See? Nice and bright. Good tight spread. Pointed at the screen here, you can see it's a nice tight circle spread. So with that, let's go ahead. Spin it back around, turn off power, put the optic lens on so you can see how the beam is manipulated. Front lens here, line up the screws. Give it a little press to help seal it around. Take the original four screws, and again, they have a green epoxy sealant on them, so it helps keep grime condensation from getting in where the screws go. So outer optic lens back on, nice and tightly sealed. A 
Now, with the optic, you can see it's a much broader spread of light. And actually, pointing it at the screen here, when I mentioned earlier that it's a 60 by 40 spread, it's not completely even, which would be if you had basically a specific degreed spotlight, like our two degree and our eight degree, which are perfectly round for their light output. In this case, with the spread being a bit different, you can see that when you have your beam installed in your housing, you can manipulate the pattern. So if you need to go a bit lower, higher for your output, you can arrange it like so. If you'd like it to be wider, turn the beam pattern, and then you'll have a wider spread, so really good distance out to your left and right. So again, you can have it aimed to suit your application. So if it's up higher on your rig, you can manipulate the beam so it shines down better. If it's even on your bumpers, put it in a wide degree spread. That way you have a nice good spread of light right in front of the vehicle where it's needed on the immediate basis. Thanks for spending some time with me here on CyberNet Television, getting an inside look while I take it apart. Back to you, Stuart. Well, there you have it. The SNSL4 is available here on CyberNet. Thanks for watching CyberNet TV.